Well, I am so excited to be with you today and just pumped that I get to talk about building a professional network and community. I started blogging almost 10 years ago, and I have to say that one of my very favorite things that has happened over the years is the incredible network and community that I have built. And I just, I never expected it, never dreamed it would happen. So it's been so exciting. And I I have to say, I can't wait to share with you the things that I did over the years. Let me first say, it didn't just happen by accident. It took intentional work on my part. And that's why I'm thrilled to share some of my secrets with you. So I wanna start out today by asking you a few questions. These are just a few questions for you to consider. Does networking make you cringe? Why? Have you been dreaming about creating a network and community to be a part of, but you don't even know where to start? Are you in the middle of a season where you have tried to create a network and you just feel stuck? Well, you are in the perfect place because I think you will find what I share with you today helpful no matter how you answered those questions and no matter where you find yourself. So you're gonna soon learn that if I can do this, you can do this too. Almost 10 years ago, I had absolutely no idea what I was doing. I had no community online, I had no network online, but I did have a dream to start an online ministry for moms. And at that time, I had four, my four kids were very little and I felt really alone in motherhood and overwhelmed. And I thought, I can't be the only mom that feels this way. And so after a lot of prayer, um, August 1st, 2011, about nine years ago, I started the website, thebettermom.com. And it's simply a place where we can come together and learn to be better by becoming more like Jesus. Uh, But there was a bigger picture to me because I knew that if we were impacting moms, we were actually impacting families, which was actually impacting the face of generations to come. And so now here we are almost a decade later and we reach not only moms, but we reach men and women all over the world with the Better Life Ministry. You know, anyone can start a blog, anyone can write, anyone can speak, Anyone can fill in the blank, whatever type of ministry you want to say there. But I believe when you start your ministry because you believe you've been called to something, it is so much more. It's a ministry and a tool that God can use to reach women all over the world. So don't underestimate what God has called you to do. Don't underestimate what God has called you to do. And I'm here to help. I want to help you right where you're at. So we're going to cover a lot of ground. I have my notes here because I have to stay on track because I want you to walk away from here feeling fully equipped, knowing and believing that you can build that professional network and community community that you have always dreamed of. And I'm going to share three simple ways that you can build that network and community that you're longing for. And if we're all being honest, it's the network and community that we need. We need one another. So here are three ways that you can build that network and community. First of all, reach out and find your people. Reach out and find your people. So this is like where we begin. How do we find those people? Where do we even start? Like I said, I had no community online. I was literally starting from scratch. I knew one person who was a blogger who I'd Uh, who was my roommate in college, but that's it. So this, at this point, this takes a lot of action and you're going to have to work for this. So here is what I would say uh, under reaching out and finding your people. First of all, I would make a list of people that you follow or that you know that have the same passion as you or that are in a field that complements or makes sense with yours. So you're gonna literally make a list of people here, like one, two, three, you're making an actual list of people that you follow. Maybe it's just you love what they do and you wanna support them. Um, 
for me, back when I started, this was I was looking for people that complemented my area of ministry. So I found someone who was creating these amazing meal plans, and she and I reached out to her, and then she started creating the, those meal plans for my ministry for moms. And we have been friends ever since, and we've partnered in all sorts of ways. Or I found somebody who did decor. I found somebody who who wrote books uh, and resources for moms. So what is it? Who are those people? People that fit either are compatible with what your ministry is about, or maybe you just honestly really love what they're doing and you want to support them and partner with them. So first you're going to make your list of people. So you're going to already have that list of people. Secondly, you're going to think through and write down your purpose statement so you can state it concisely and clearly. Now, this is such an important step, and this there's many reasons that this is important. This is going to give you clarity if you haven't already done it before. But you need this purpose statement because this purpose statement, then you can just drop into messages and emails quickly, easily. This saves you from a long, rambling email where you're trying to describe what you do in ministry. Been there, you know, like I've been there, done that. That's why I'm laughing. Um, so this really helps you narrow down and state uh, clearly and concisely what your ministry is all about. So you're going to focus on the felt need and how your ministry is solving that felt need. Here is how to um, figure out your purpose statement. Let me give you an example. So first of all is the problem. Write down what the problem is. So for me, it was that I was over. I feel overwhelmed as a mom. That's the problem. Simply stated, I feel overwhelmed as a mom. The people I'm reaching, the felt need I'm reaching, they feel overwhelmed as moms. My solution for those moms, my the solution my ministry is offering, here is a solution then. I show moms simple and meaningful ways they can care for themselves, their homes, their families, and ultimately honor God with their lives. So when that is my solution that I would state to anybody who I want to partner with in ministry, if I needed to tell them what my ministry was about, uh, my Better Mom ministry, I would say I show moms simple and meaningful ways they can care for themselves, their homes, their families, and ultimately honor God with their lives. Now, I do want to say here, if you plan on reaching out to businesses, I would alter this a little bit um, depending on what type of business you are reaching out to. So I have another example of this statement that I use for some businesses that I reach out to. So it might be like, it might sound something like this. I show moms simple and meaningful ways they can care for themselves, their homes, and their families. That's it. It's a clear, concise purpose statement. This will make it so much easier when you go on to what I'm going to tell you next because you will have already done the work and you'll be able to share what your ministry is all about very quickly, very clearly, very concisely. So lastly, this is the part where you're actually reaching out. You have to actually do the work. It is a little bit scary, but go for it because you never know what someone is going to say. So lastly, send the emails and the messages. So once you've taken the time to make that list of people and prepare your purpose statement, you can send those emails and messages, no problem. You will basically have a draft of what you're sending out and you just change it a little bit uh, depending on how you're reaching out who you're reaching out to. Now, in this part, I want to share with you. I hope you're excited about this because if it's if it's if you're anything like me, I want people to just tell me what to do. Like give me the exact example of what I should say. I it just makes things so much easier. So I have actual email examples that you are welcome to use. You're welcome to alter them to fit obviously your ministry and who you're reaching out to, but feel free to use them as templates as you create your own emails. And I'm gonna share a few of those examples with you right now. So if I'm reaching out to somebody who I would love to partner with, um, this is what I might say, and this is really interesting. When I was preparing for this teaching, I was I went back through the last 10 years of ministry, and I was looking at actual emails that I sent people. 
because I wanted to see what I really was doing then. And I, I sent so many emails to different people. And so this first email is an actual email that I sent out before I started my website almost 10 years ago. This is what it said. Hi, June. I'm launching a new site, thebettermom.com, on August 1st, which is being backed by so-and-so and so-and-so. It will have over 20 contributors addressing all different topics that pertain to motherhood. The first week will be a whole week of wonderful giveaways and some guest bloggers. So-and-so mentioned you as a great person to do a guest post that first week. I am wondering if you would be interested in that. I just love your site and your heart for building a home and a family that pursues Christ with everything. Thank you for your consideration, and I look forward to hearing from you soon. Blessings, Ruth Schwank. Here is another example of an email. Hi, Amanda. I'm not sure that we have formally met, but I have followed your ministry for a long time. I absolutely love your heart for God and for moms. I have an online ministry for moms where I show moms simple and meaningful ways they can care for themselves, their homes, their families, and ultimately honor God with their lives. I am so excited to be releasing a brand new Devo for moms next month, and I am looking for places to share a short devotional or blog post. I'm reaching out to see if you would happen to have an opening on your blog. If not, I completely understand, but if so, I would be honored to share with your community. Thank you so much for your consideration, and I look forward to hearing from you soon. So as you can see, those emails were short, simple, and sweet. They were to the point, because I had done the work of figuring out my purpose statement, I was able to, in that second email, uh, once I had that, able to slip that in there very quickly, concisely, clearly. They understand what I'm about, and I can make the email short and sweet. Because I'm sure that you know when you get long emails, like you have to set them aside. So I don't want somebody to do that. I want them to feel like they can read that right away. So keep it short, simple, and sweet. Um, also, you probably noticed in the emails that I made connections, okay? So like I said, when I first started uh, online ministry, I knew one person who was my roommate in college. And I asked her if it would be okay um, she had a blog at the time, if, if it would be okay if I used her name when I started to reach out to people. And she said, yes, that would be fine. And so I was able to state somebody that we had mutually in common. Now, what's interesting is when I started looking at all, you know, the emails I've sent over the years, I did that over and over and over again. I would ask people if it was okay, if I knew that they knew somebody else, I'd ask them if it was okay if I used their name. And if they said yes, I would use their name in my email to reach out to somebody. Because you have to remember when you're reaching out to somebody, they might have no idea who you are. So this right away built credibility. And I needed that because people didn't know who I was. And so I feel like making connect, making a connection in your emails, stating somebody that you mutu you have mutually in common, or maybe somebody recommends somebody else, you're able to say that, um, is a very, very good thing to do. Um, really, again, I knew one person when I started, but then as I got to know more people and I knew that they knew somebody, then I would ask them if it was okay if I used their name to reach out to somebody. Um, here, if you feel like, I want to say, if you feel like you don't know anyone and you don't even know where to start with this, I would suggest joining a group like Proverbs 31 Ministries has called Compel. Um, this Compel is an incredible community of women in ministry, and there's a whole bunch of connections to be made there. And so if you feel like, oh, I just, I don't even know where to start with this. I don't even know if I really know anybody. Uh, join a group like Compel because there are so many women in ministry and so many connections that you can make there. Now, I do want to talk briefly about reaching out to businesses because I think there are some of you that do want to reach out to businesses. Um, I started reaching out to businesses when I right when I was starting online ministry. Um, this is something I did from the very beginning. And so these emails will look a little bit differently. Um, so I'm going to give you a couple examples. So first of all, this is an email, a very simple email that I would have sent out from in the beginning, something like this. 
Hi, I'm launching a brand new site for moms August 1st called TheBetterMom.com to show moms simple and meaningful ways they can care for themselves, their homes, their families, and ultimately honor God with their lives. I would love to share your resources with everyone. Our family has used your Bible studies for years, and we can't think of a better company to support. If you are interested, I'd love to talk further. Many blessings, Ruth Schwank. Now, if you're further down the road and you want to reach out to a bigger company, okay? So maybe you wanna reach out to a really huge company. This took me a long time to understand what that email should really look like. And so I wanna give you this template because this has really helped me. Once I put this together, this really helped me. So let me give you an example of what I would send out to a, a larger company. The subject line might say something like, sharing blank, and that blank is whatever company you're reaching out to, with my audience of over one million. Hello, my name is Ruth Schwank, and I am the founder of The Better Mom, where I show moms simple and meaningful ways they can care for themselves, their homes, and their families. With four children, I understand the struggle to try to keep it all together as a busy mom. One of my very favorite ways to encourage moms is to show them easy ways they can care for themselves. Skin care is at the very top of my list as I have diligently cared for my skin for years. I have used blank skincare and hair care for the last few years and it is fabulous. I would love to partner with blank to create some posts perfect for moms who are looking for skincare that is not only affordable but good for them. I have an audience of over 1 million across social media and I'd love to share your products with them. It would also be fun to take my audience behind the scenes on Facebook Live. I'd love to send over my media kit and I look forward to hearing from you soon. Many blessings, Ruth Schwenk. Now that's obviously from someone um, like me who has spent you know, a long time building up an audience, reaching out to a bigger company. But um, you, know, you can have a few hundred, a few thousand, whatever, and you could reach out to a bigger company with an email like that. You may have noticed that I mentioned a media kit and I wanted to mention that on purpose because that is something that we hear a lot about. If you don't know what a media kit is, it's simply a one page. Well, for me, it's a one page about my ministry with some stats on it. So I believe with your media kit, less is more. And to be completely honest, I, over the last decade, have used a media kit maybe three or four times, and it was only with very large companies. And so I would say if that's too much for you, you don't even want to think about it, go ahead and skip that because you know what, over the years, what I have done has felt more personal and all I've done is just reach back out if they've asked for some stats, I've give, given them some stats via email, just listed a few there um, and it's worked fabulous. I've worked with dozens of companies like that, hundreds of companies probably. So. If you are interested in a media kit, I'll make sure that you have access to see mine. But the most important thing I believe with your media kit is that less is more. So that is reaching out and finding your people. Now I think here in, in reaching out and finding your people, every connection, the most important thing here is that every connection you make needs to be personal and genuine. Whether you're reaching out to a company or you're reaching out to an individual, you will build your network person by person. And it can't be all about me. It has to be about we. And it can't be all about what you can get from somebody um, or what they can do for you, but rather what you can do together. People will know that and they'll be able to discern that. So reach out and find your people. Next is stand out and set yourself apart. Now I say this often and I know there's a lot of people who say this, but I always say that who you are at home is who you really are. And we stand out and set ourselves apart by being trustworthy and worth standing alongside. Kindness and generosity is the name of the game here. It always wins. It's the mindset, again, where it's not about what someone can do for me, but what I can do for them, what we can do together. And that gets us far with people. Also here, in standing out and setting yourself apart, keep in mind that we, in the online world, people don't know you, okay? They don't know us. 
So we have to kind of break down that barrier. So I would recommend maybe you are in local ministry and maybe you do work face to face with people. Um, but there's a lot of people in local ministry who still don't see people very often. I would recommend meeting up at coffee shops or doing, um, if you want to do something online, you could do FaceTime or Skype. Um, but definitely make those in-person connections. What has been the best for me over the years is going to conferences, those face-to-face -face meetings in person where you can actually see who I am face-to-face, -face, where I can get to know you face-to-face. -face. Those have been invaluable to my ministry, and I have gone to conferences, several conferences, over the last 10 years. So when we stand out and set ourselves apart, our network grows because people are drawn to us and, and they trust us. And so we're going to reach out and find our people. We're gonna stand out and set ourselves apart. And lastly, settle in and do the work. So <laughs> you can't just make the connection and stop there. I know it, it's tempting, but it takes time. You have, there's very few people that when I started 10 years ago in ministry that, that are still doing, there's very few people that are still doing it. Most people quit. That's just the truth. It's hard work. So you need to prepare yourself now for the hard work. Prepare yourself to settle in and do the work. Here are some things you can continue to do to strengthen and build relationships. And really, that's what we're doing during this time that we're, we're settling in and doing the work. We are taking the time to strengthen, make new connections, build relationships. So here are some ways that you can continue to do that. First of all, mastermind groups. And you may have heard of a mastermind group before. And these are simply groups of people who decide that they're going to support one another by sharing each other's content with their audiences. Maybe they pray together, support one another in, in some way. Um, so that's a mastermind group. Sometimes they're centered around something that people do. So maybe there's a podcast mastermind group and, and they're all in that mastermind group so they can give each other tips um, on podcasting. Uh, sometimes it's just very random and it's just several different people that just really connected online. So find yourself a mastermind group to be a part of or go ahead and start a mastermind group and ask people to be a part of that with you. I know I already stated this, but online groups like Compel, uh, a group like Compel is the perfect place to continue to grow your ministry relationships. Lastly, strengthen your connections through generosity. And this is effective follow-up. This is continued partnership. This is helping others. And it doesn't have to be complicated. I, I know that a lot of people are question, like, well, how do I continue partnering with people? It all seems like too much. It doesn't have to be. You can make it really, really simple. So first of all, what I do here is I just honestly pay attention to what people are doing online that I feel likes working that would maybe work for my ministry and I try to recreate that with people. Here are some ideas for continued partnership. First of all, you can do giveaways together on Instagram to cross promote your audiences and you may have seen people doing that. I have been doing a lot of that over the last year because it's really working and I feel like it's really building up my partnership with certain people. And this is something that I want to continue. Now, it's funny because I look back and when when I first started in ministry online, I was doing this on Facebook. I would partner with people. I would reach out and say if it was somebody I that I really loved what they were doing, I would ask if they were interested in cross-promoting our Facebook pages. And so I would share on my Facebook page all about this person and tell people to go follow them, and they would do the same for me. So find ways that you can partner and cross-promote your audiences. Share one another's articles on your social media account. So whether it's a, a blog post or something that they shared on their social media, share that on your social media accounts. It doesn't even, it doesn't always have to be, you share this, I'll share this. Well, I mean, just share it out of generosity and kindness if there's something that you really love. Or if you want a partner, I've done that as well, where you cross promote your, your blog posts or different posts on social media. Uh, writing a book together. This is a great way to partner together. I have done this and it has been the best experience. So you can write an ebook, you can write um, a self published book, or you can write traditional published book. Writing a book together is a great way to partner together. 
Uh, ask someone to if you can write a guest post for them or ask them if they'd like to write a guest post for you. Again, this is something I have done so many times over the years and I still do it. There are some people today that we just know uh, that we are always willing to like I offer them to write on my site and they offer me to write on their site. So that's a great way to partner with one another. Promoting a new book release. Uh, that's a great way to support and build and strengthen relationships. Doing a book study for your audiences together. So this is, you know, maybe you're just grabbing one person or maybe you're grabbing a, a handful of people and together you're going to do a book study for all of your audiences. What a great way to bring everybody together and also strengthen your relationship as a group um, partnering together. Uh, you could do an online course together. That's a great way to partner together. Um, you could also, what about podcasts? You know, podcasts are so big and uh, they're just a great way to partner with people. Ask if you can be a guest on someone's podcast. Or if you have a podcast, don't hesitate to reach out. Reach out to the people that you'd even think, no, I don't know if they would be a guest. Reach out to them. You never know. So there's all sorts of ways that we can continue to build and strengthen our relationships and partner together. So we're going to reach out and find our people. We're going to stand out and set ourselves apart. And lastly, we're going to settle in and do the work. You know, like I said earlier, um, anyone can start something. Right? They, can, they can start a blog, they can start an online ministry, they can write a book, they can speak. Anyone can start something. But I believe that when God has called you to that something, it is so much more. And that speaks to the very first question I asked you. And I don't know if you remember what that question is, but I asked you, does building a network make you cringe? Why? If this is what you were made to do, you won't be able to not build a community because nothing, nothing can stop you from sharing it with the world when it's what God has called you to do. We keep our focus in building our network. We keep our focus on glorifying God and blessing others. And in turn, we create a powerful network that honors God, benefits others, and also expands our reach. I just want to remind you, if I can do this, you can too. We are in this together. If you are longing for a network, if you are longing for a network like I was, if you're longing for that network to be a part of, you're not alone. There are so many others like you. So take the time, take the time to reach out, to stand out and to settle in because in doing so, you will find those people who needed you too.